Now, we all know for a fact that if you have constipation, you just need to add more fiber, okay? I mean, it's the general consensus of the medical community that a lack of fiber is really what's behind constipation. Well, today, let's just talk about what the number one mistake is with constipation and then some additional things that you need to know if you have constipation. Let's just take a look at constipation for a second. It's a traffic jam in your gut, right? It's congestion. You have too much stool. Now, fiber increases bulk, okay? It increases stool. It increases volume. So just by looking at that, why would you ever want to increase more volume or mass or bulk into a tube or plumbing that's already congested? That does not make sense to me. Also, think about what fiber does. It causes your microbes to create fermentation. With fermentation comes gas and bloating. Usually people that have constipation don't need any more gas or bloating. The other point about people that are chronically constipated is that they're already doing a lot of fiber, but it's not working. So to add more fiber is not a good idea. There's some fascinating studies um, with people who have both chronic constipation and people who have constipation with irritable bowel syndrome or some other type of inflammatory condition that adding more fiber will make it worse. That's right. If you have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which is your microbes are in the wrong place. They're in the small intestine, okay? They should be in the large intestine, so they're higher up. And you consume more fiber. Oh my goodness, you're going to get bloating. It's going to make things really, really bad. So the biggest mistake that people make for constipation is adding more fiber. In fact, I used to have very, very bad constipation. And by accident, I got rid of it. It was at the time when I kind of stumbled on cutting out carbs. And so I was doing a lot of grain carbs as my fiber for cereal and things like that. When I switched to eating more like meats, like a buffalo burger, even, even fish for breakfast, all my constipation completely went away. And it was like, I was dumbfounded because I'm like, I just thought I had to add more Metamucil or other types of fiber. But every time I did that, it got worse. But it was really bizarre just to eat more meat and find that my constipation completely cleared up. But at the time, I didn't really know why. So instead of adding more fiber, just omit the fiber. So number one, reduce your fiber. Now, of course, I just want to differentiate two different types of fiber, okay? Vegetable fiber is usually okay, but even that sometimes can bind you up. But the most likely reason for people having a worsening with more fiber is the grain fiber. And that includes the fiber from beans, lentils, and bran. And unfortunately now, even the keto community there's all sorts of new synthetic fibers like corn fiber and tapioca fiber and um, all sorts of things that are, um, I think, very unhealthy, but um, we won't go there on this video. All right, number two is the side effect from their medication. Um, antacids, antidepressants are common medications that have side effects of constipation, but there are others as well. So I always like to kind of look at the obvious. What's the elephant in the room? And if someone's doing medication, like just look that up and see if it has a side effect of constipation. Now, the next thing is a lack of thymine, vitamin B1. B1 is intimately involved in the what's called the peristalsis or the pumping action of the colon because it helps build up what's called a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. And so the reason why people are deficient in B1 is that they consume too many carbs and sugars, but B1 can sometimes uh, easily correct constipation. Plus, it supports the vagus nerve, which is part of the autonomic nervous system, which actually can uh, really help if someone has um, like too much stress too, and everything is locked up because they're more in this flight or fight mode. So that would be another reason, stress. Okay, stress is a part of that as well. Now, the next one is a lack of bile. If you're lacking bile, typically you will have constipation. Bile tends to lubricate the colon. And uh, sometimes people have uh, like this bile sludge that's bound up into the bile ducts and that can cause pain in the right shoulder or, or discomfort or tightness underneath the right rib cage. 
which is indication that they don't have enough bile. By adding more bile salts as a supplement, you can sometimes relieve constipation and even get rid of constipation because it helps to lubricate the colon and also helps you digest. But I want to bring that up as a, a definite cause to constipation. If you take too much bile, you'll get diarrhea. So that's a good way to know if you're taking too much bile. The other thing is a dysbiosis. This is a involving um, imbalance in your microflora and your gut. So instead of adding more fiber, why don't you just add more of a probiotic, right? That would be a, a better thing to do because the microbes in constipation a lot of times are, are missing. But if you have SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, if you take these microbes, okay, they end up in the small intestine and that can actually give you more bloating. So if you get more bloating with probiotics, then we know you might have SIBO. Another common cause of constipation is the person's eating too many frequent meals. They're having three meals, three snacks, and you never let your digestive system have a chance to breathe or rest in between eating. So going on an, an intermittent fasting schedule is huge. It's a game changer for someone that has chronic constipation because you finally have a chance to let your digestive system rest in between eating. It's not natural to eat of that frequency. Another thing is sometimes when people eat way too much protein, sometimes they go on carnivore and they get constipated, uh, they need to increase more fat to their protein ratios because if they have too much protein, you can only digest or, or, or assimilate so much protein and the rest can be a problem, and sometimes it can be constipating. That's why like on the Atkins diet, which is a high protein diet, you know, one of the side effects is constipation versus the healthy version of keto that I recommend, it's a moderate amount of protein. And then the other thing that's connected to that is low hydrochloric acid. If you don't have enough HCL in your stomach, you're not gonna be able to digest protein, and that is going to cause constipation because you're gonna have incomplete digestion at a higher level. So you have this huge tube that's like 25 feet long. If you can't digest way up at the top of the tube, think about what happens lower in the chain of events. You get a lot of undigested food material that just backs up as a traffic jam. So adding betaine hydrochloride, apple cider vinegar, when you eat is a very smart thing. The other thing is like you're very low in magnesium and potassium. You have two electrolytes that are needed um, to power these little um, batteries that power the nerves and the muscle. And your colon is muscle. So it needs potassium and magnesium as the electrolytes. And also magnesium creates a nice relaxation of the muscle. So uh, of course, if you have too much, you can create diarrhea. But anyway, I wanted to touch on this um, topic of constipation to give you some additional things to think about and do. And if you have not seen my video on intermittent fasting, that would be probably one of the most important things to do if you have not started yet. And I put that video up right here.